everyone, uh, Anastasia Pachenko here, and I'm going to show you a little art demo um, for how I do my art. Um, and specifically, I'm going to show you uh, how I do my illustration work. Um, my process for doing comic or short form, um, short form and long form comics is a little bit different. Um, just because of like the repetition of, of design and things like that. But how I do my illustrations and everything, um, I do it a, a very specific way. It helps me get the proportions um, just the way I want them. And it really helps me um, work on uh, the design of the character more rather than um, fussing over the, the, the proportions and um, things like that. So uh, what I do is I use um, a program called Easy Pose and I create a 3D model in the pose that I want my particular character to be in um, and then I, uh, I work from there. And uh, we're gonna do this in a little bit of a speed draw format and I'll narrate over um, what I'm doing at each point so that you can see um, all of the techniques that I that I employ. Um, this is kind of a, a fat, like even for a speed draw for me, this is kind of a a rushed illustration, um, just to kind of like demonstrate everything. Um, if I was being more careful, um, then the speed draw would take probably. Um, twice as long as what it did. Um, the total drawing time on it was a little over three hours. Um, so I set it up to be about 30-ish minutes here um, so that I had some time to like show you what's going on, but um, so I can show you the, like, the, the whole thing start to finish and explain each of the different stages of the creation of this piece of digital art. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's get into it. Okay, so here's the first little bit. Uh, it's the first process of this, and it's what we call redlining. Um, so redlining is a, um, it's kind of a general technique to like rough out uh, where your shapes, where your perspective lines are, um, and a bunch of different elements within a within an image that you are illustrating. Um, typically, uh, it's it's used for translating. Like, if you have a lot a live photo, um, then you would redline all of your perspective lines, all of your people and other objects and elements within the um, within that photo and you would get your uh, your red lines from it. Um, there are two ways to do the red line uh, and one is the gesture type, which is what I did here, which is kind of long kind of sketchy type um, strokes to get the general uh, direction of movement or direction of um, of action for each of the um, elements within the um, within the image. Uh, the other type is uh, to go through and um, isolate each of the different, um, like with a with a photo or with a an illustration rather. Um, you would like put in circles and spheres for. Um, the shoulders, the elbows, each of the knuckles, and then fill in the the, the, the shapes as you build up the form of the person. Um, and that way you can get the uh, a different body shape than necessarily the one that you started out with as your model or your reference. Um, and in my um, in my more detailed work, that's what I usually end up doing actually is going for the more detailed, um, like shape uh, lining uh, before I go into my sketch, which is what's happening now. Um, 
and so I, I will uh, reduce the opacity, the transparency of what I just redlined so that I can start sketching over top of it and really kind of figuring out my shapes and um, my like relations and you know as you see here like go through like the different um, expressions or what have you um, and occasionally I will go back and uh, reference my my model and see if I can get something else out of it um, or play off of it and if you're starting out as an artist um, there is no shame in using a um, using a 3D model like this as as a reference to help you figure out the relationship of different body parts or to figure out the spacings uh, of you know facial features better. Um, it's it's all just a tool and it helps train that muscle memory um, in your hand. So so now I'm going through and I am um, just sketching up all of the different elements and you will see um, that for the most part I follow like my red lines. Um, later on uh, you'll see that I, I go back to the um, I go back to the, the reference image underneath and straighten a few things out that um, I had, you know, kind of improperly sketched before. And that's kind of the glorious thing about digital art is you can kind of go back and really play around with things and get things a little bit better um, and keep on trying, keep on practicing uh, until it looks how you think it should look. All right, so now you'll see that I am going into uh, adding in design elements. And the first thing that I usually start with is actually the hair. Um, hair can be uh, a very expressive um, character design uh, element. Um, and, you know, there's, um, there's a lot to be said for like the attitude of a character once you give them a, a different type of hair. You could have the same face and give them 30 different hairstyles and you've actually technically created 30 different characters because the the hair itself is its own character element. Um, so in this case, because this is like a mercenary type character, I wanted to go with kind of a punk style um, kind of soldier of fortune type look um and also this uh this side swept faux hawk is like one of my favorite um like punk style haircuts so it usually ends up going into at least one of my badass female characters um so this is about the time when i also start fussing around with the face um and again this is one of those interesting things about and good things about being uh, in digital is like I can 
recognize, oh wait, this didn't look quite right, the eyes were too close together, something wasn't right, and you know, you can go ahead and fix them. Get the lips drawn in a little bit more correctly, and then go from there. Get the uh, the irises finally put in, um, and play around with those, and really just try and suss out um, like where this character is looking, um, and what the the feel that this character should be giving off. Um, hair and eyes are a really really big part of uh, your of how your character. Um, can end up looking like the, the the not only the attitude but also the um, the presence that they give off, uh, whether it is menacing or intimidating um, or something else. Uh, it's not just focused in their actions; it can also be focused in just how they look, because that can set up like kind of a an audience assumption about this character. Okay, and the next uh, design element that gets put in uh, is clothing or armor. Um, if you've noticed, I do um, each of my different elements. Um, so my my different my sketch is black, um, standard kind of uh, black pencil or ink color. Um, but then, like when I do the hair, it's all in uh, red. And when I go in and I do clothes. Um, clothing is all done in green. This is just my preference, um, but it helps me color code out uh, the different elements and how they layer on top of each other. Um, so like if this character was wearing armor at all, which I opted not to put on her, I would have done a separate layer uh, just for designing the armor on, and that would have usually been in um, actually a yellow color is what I would have used for, for that. Um, but we, go, we, go, we go ahead and we sketch in the different um, clothing elements, uh, accessories, things like that. Um, I wanted her to be wearing like a smart watch, so I, I throw one in really quick on her wrist. And since I've already established that she's actually a southpaw because she's holding the gun, um, in her left hand, which would make that her dominant hand. So watch goes on the right hand. And that's one of those um, design elements that you have to, um, that's really important to pay attention to. Um, because if you, if you set up that a character is holding um, a particularly dominant uh, object in one hand, um, not all the time, but most of the time, like that becomes the, the dominant hand. So in this case, it's the left hand. Um, so any additional elements um, need to be planned out accordingly. 
And so with this character, you know, she's holding the gun in her left hand, decided that was going to be her dominant. Um, and, you know, people are creatures of habit. So you always put your watch on your off hand. Um, and it's just a general human trait that we all have. She wouldn't put her watch on the same arm that she's going to be doing the majority of her, like, um, you know, heavy fighting with. She's going to be, she's going to put it on the, uh, the side of her that she can, you know, easily look to, um, whilst her dominant hand is occupied either with, um, using her gun or using, um, some other object within the world. All right, and we are on to line art already. Um, so I use, um, in Clip Studio Paint, uh, I use the turnip pen. Um, and for this, I just did this on a stabilization of 80, um, mostly because I was trying to turn this out pretty quick. Um, I would normally actually have the, the stabilization up a little bit further, um, but, for doing quick illustrations, um, it works very, very well. And um, I like to have it at what I consider a middle of the road um, uh, size for the brush, which it, I find 10 pixels to be kind of middle of the road because uh, as you're applying pressure, like however much pressure you apply, you are changing the, the pixel width of your brush. So you can go anywhere from that full uh, 10 pixels all the way down to, you know, like your one pixel or even a little bit lower, depending on how you're, um, how you're, you're holding the pressure on the, on the pencil, uh, the pen. Um, so I go ahead and I, I line in all of my things, uh, all of my elements. Um, one of the things that I've I've uh, I've kind of figured out on my own, but also from watching you know, other digital artists work, is that um, you know work in work in stages. Um, so work one element to the next element, and they don't necessarily need to be um, like sequential. Uh, so if something is giving you a hard time, like that other side of the shirt, um, move on to a different element or something else to keep the energy going in your hand. Cause you never want that energy to like dissipate because that's, what's giving you your, your range of action and movement. Um, and it's what keeps everything flowing. So if it's, if it's, just giving you a difficult time, go back to it um, when you're working on something else in that area or um, or after you've, you know, put in a few more elements, depending on what you, you want to do. Um, and then when it comes to lining, uh, this is actually kind of like a, a last ditch kind of area to um you'll you'll notice like i i notice you know i didn't put in certain elements like i hadn't put in the uh the interior um dimensioning for the karambit um and i hadn't put in the um the muscle lines for her thumb and you know where the the palm is so I went back and I did that, uh, cleaned up the 
the dimensions on the on the pistol. Um, these are all things that you can you can kind of do like once you get down to the the nitty gritty with you know you're finalized in, in doing your lining. Okay, so here I am uh, getting ready to uh, put in my flats, and right now I'm going through and making sure that all of my my lines are closed up, um, at least for the most part, and everything that is behind a particular element um, is either erased or you know is displaying properly. Um, you'll you'll notice that there are some things that I don't quite catch until later, but I do end up catching them, um, and one, that's my favorite thing about digital art is that if you catch a mistake later on down the line, you can still fix it. So we're just going through, we're kind of cleaning stuff up um, as far as our lines, making sure that nothing is left open before we uh, we start selecting our image for um for flatting in um, and one of the most common practices is something that you're about to see right here so you select the outside area and then you inverse the selection um, so that it's selecting everything within the outer lines of your entire drawing and then you can from there you can give it all one uniform color and what this helps do is um it gives you a uniform area that is a specific color that's probably not going to be part of your um, your image so that you know areas that have to be colored in. And if you find any of those off colors, then that's an area that you haven't uh, flatted in yet. So, and it, it just helps um, with a, a visualization of, of where each element needs to be colored. So the first thing that I always do is I do my skin tone flat. Um, and then from there I do my clothing. In this case, I do, um, like originally it's gonna have the, um, the shirt, uh, the watch band and the gloves all be the same color. But then I was like, no, because if she's, you know, even paramilitary, she's still going to be wearing um, kind of military-esque clothing, uh, which includes an olive drab tank top. Uh, it's very indicative, especially of uh, army or marines. And then you can go in and do each of the individual elements. And, you know, as you as you work on each element, uh, flattening it in, you may discover um, some open lines here and there, or some areas that you want to get cleaned up a little bit better. Um, I do this with um, her hair, and I also do this um, with the whites of her eyes and with her smartwatch. Um, and it's one of those things that it's not. Um, you know, it's it's not a, a bad thing to just keep constantly um, pushing on on your your work to to do something different with it or um, to, to to tweak it 
until it's where you want it to be. Um, or where, um, if you're taking commissions, where your, um, where your client wants it to be. So, you know, it, it's all just keep going, keep working on it, and, you know, eventually it will, it'll come through how, how it needs to be. All right, and now we're on to shading um, or rendering, as we say. Um, and initially, when I did this, I was using um, a marker tool to do my my shading, but I eventually decided that I wanted a little bit more control over it, so I switched back to um, actually the turnip pen um, that I was using for um, my my lining with a slightly lower stabilization so that I could get kind of um, a loose kind of fluid coloring um, type strokes with it and worked from there to like build up the shadows in certain areas. Um, I tend to be a little conservative uh, in my shading, um, but there's really no need to be. Um, it's one of those things that uh, I'm actually still working on, but you know, that's art. It's um, it's constant uh, improvement and constant, um, you know, working towards um, not just improvement um, of your your technique, but improvement um, in in multiple techniques. So. You know, shading is one of those areas where you you kind of know um, when you've sort of done too little because we're we're all used to seeing how how light and shadow works um, in our day to day lives, um, but I wasn't I wasn't too concerned with it um, with this particular illustration 
because like I said, um, it's just kind of a, a quick little doodle that I wanted to, to do for this, just to show all of the different ways and methods that um, I use that go into um, my, my art to uh, all of my different pieces. Um, and yeah, like shading is, is so fun for me. Like I really, really enjoy working on shading because you get to thinking about, okay, well, where's my light source at? How does that play off of, you know, cloth? How does that play off of metal? How does that play off of leather? Where does, you know, it cast a certain shadow from this object? Um, and it can be it can be really kind of fun to, to puzzle that out and figure out where all of your shadows need to be. Um, like I said, I, I usually end up being a little conservative at first, um, but as I as I work on a piece and I keep working on it and I keep working on it, uh, eventually um, I end up in a place where I am super happy with it. Um, yeah, and so just like that, we've got a a pretty badass looking chick here. Um, and I really hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at a demo of my process and um, of how, you know, not only how I do my digital art, but also a little explanation as to how to start maybe um, doing digital art for yourself. Um, it's a super fun and always, I, I wouldn't say, hmm. Hmm. I don't want to say it's an easy thing to get into because it can be a little frustrating at first, but it is a very fun process to get into, and I I highly recommend it for anyone who wants to, you know, take their art to a different degree. All right. Thanks, and I really, really hope you guys enjoyed this. Bye.